So as soon, yeah, the menage a trois is very, very possible. You just gotta pick up the pace there, sweetheart. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Heart. Is that what you say? To me? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Primarily Critical of Movies at an After Party. This would be it. If you have not seen this film, we suggest that you do so before listening any further. Because we have spoilers, trivia, and opinions like crazy, and we can't wait to share them. Good, bad, new, old, or gross, weird. We pass judgment on them all. Today, I'm going to need you to shut up. <laughs> my name is Steve. I'm here with... Shh. Bill, John, be quiet. My, Shh, keep it down. my favorite John of all time and my favorite... Keep that voice out. Phil of all time. <laughs> um, uh, today we're covering A Quiet Place. Uh, who picked this? Who picked this? I did. You did? I did. Please tell us why you picked it. Well, I picked it because I watched the trailer, just like, uh, you know, for most of the reasons why. And it looked interesting. I thought, well, you know, I knew it would be a movie without a lot of dialogue. But, uh, you know, I thought, uh, what the heck? This, this seems kind of kind of weird, different. It was. So, it's, and? It's quiet? And it was. It, it, was <laughs> it was quiet without a lot of dialogue. And it was different, you know. Um, uh, we I, It wasn't that different. It wasn't like. Oh wow, that's a, such a new concept for a movie. It really was. It was just a different take on something that's been done a million times before. You, you know, alien invasion. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you do the wrong thing, they're going to attack and kill you, right? And so yeah, but they really did a great job. I, I really enjoyed this movie. This is the uh, second time I saw it. I saw it back when it came out. Oh okay. Uh, it was, good pick. Good pick. It was intense. It was intense. Intense. I it saw it when intense. it came out. I'm a, I'm a fan of John Krasinski. Um, yeah, he's great. He's yeah, he's a Ryan. good guy. I didn't realize that it was bankrolled by um, uh, Michael Bay. Oh. Um, and and um, what Andrew Brad Form and Brad Fuller. Yeah, those guys. Those I'm guys. not. I'm not. I'm not a big fan of Michael Bay, but I mean, man. No, I did, what what I don't know anything about Michael Bay, so. Uh, he's, oh, yeah. he's done Transformers movies. Uh, oh, okay. Big blockbuster explosions and action movies, right? So he's got a big wallet. He's, oh, he's, 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 oh a little, yeah. He's a little over the top, right? Whoa. But yeah. I mean, but um, yeah, he yeah. did Transformers. I, I, oh, it would uh, kill to make a Transformers movie. And uh, he did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, and, the Rock? Did he do movies like The Rock? And like, uh, the, 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 he's got a history of doing all the. He did Pain and Gain. Pain and Gain Pain was a really Gain? good. Yeah. Uh, Con Air? Did he do Con Air? Maybe. He history. Yeah, uh, he did Pearl Harbor too. Anyway, anyway, yeah, A Quiet Place. Uh, John Krasinski, um, and and Emily Blunt, um, and uh, and okay, so we we know that it's serious when the kid dies. Off the hop, yeah. Right off the hop. Very uh, serious. Yeah. He dies what twenty eighty nine days. Yeah. Into the uh, into the event, whatever yes. you know. We never did get much ex- explanation of the event. In fact, we got no explanation. No, of the event. there's not much of anything except for I'll talk. I'll talk later. But to your point, Steve, it was so early in the movie, and rarely do they kill off a kid in the movies. Like that just doesn't happen. And this movie is PG thirteen. Take that into account. Because they, they kept right. it. So 13 year olds are going, oh my God, the kid kill, got killed. If they set a tone for this movie. This is serious business here. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, yep. Well, there's yeah. not a lot of blood. What they do no? is these, these creatures, they just kind of sweep in and, well, and they're then super what, strong and super fast. That's super what fast, I, love, yeah. I love about it, right? It's, it's, it keeps you on your edge. The sound editing in this movie is awesome. It's, it's like drop a pin, awesome. Like, and and I don't know who designed these aliens, but like those those plates that wiggle around on the head, it's just it looks so like ugh, like real, like really like ugh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and okay, like I, I alluded to earlier, if you stop the movie and slow it down on that, I was watching it on Netflix. You can pick up all the news 
uh, clips that uh, the father had. Oh, yes, okay. And you, you'll you see that these aliens attacked Earth. It was meteors that hit Earth uh, in two places that I could pick up on, Mexico and Denver. And it was an, it was uh, it was an all on attack on Earth, so that's some of the backstory that I know about, right? So okay. I don't know if you guys yep. picked that up. No, I, and, I did not pause the so, movie. Yeah, man, I I thought this movie was amazingly well done, and and, and I'm very, like, well, can I take out? Then I'm just going to bring up a criticism. Sure. All right. How stupid? How stupid can you be to think? You know what? I think we should have a baby now. Oh, let's have a baby. <laughs> yep. Is that not the dumbest thing you well, could that... ever think of in that situation? Babies cry. Yeah. They need constant attention. They make constant noise. Yeah. Let's have a baby. Well, I agree nobody's making condoms, stupid, John. Stupid, nobody's stupid. making There's condoms. No, like, you, <laughs> Listen, they're stealing. They're finding. They're looking through prescri- a, a roll of prescription drugs. Hey, get a roll of Saran wrap, then, for crying out loud! John, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, John, John. Yes. They had a contingency plan. They built this room that was supposed to be soundproof. They built a baby box. They they had oxygen ready. They had a also plan. they could have unprotected sex and have they want. But you want to bring a baby? This is. You want to raise your kid in this. This is hey. your thought. Like, there's people today that are going like, oh, I don't know, man. The world's pretty screwed up. I'm not sure we should have a kid. That's Here's... the way things are right now. People yeah. are saying that, you know. Uh, I, I agree. I agree to a point. But, hey, man, they were preppers. They they had a farm. They had the means to survive. Maybe they thought it's up to us to uh, make the human uh, race Repopulate continue. the earth. You know what? They okay. Didn't, but... I, I have something to say. I have something to say. Okay. Okay. Um, maybe it's a religious thing. I did take a note saying that they Ooh, had okay. they wow. they they did grace at dinner. They all oh. sat down. They they held hands and they 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 said a prayer. Every sperm is sacred, as Monty <laughs> Python would say. <laughs> Every like. sperm is sacred. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. Let, let, Monty awesome. Python will lead the way. Yeah. Great pickup, Steve. That's awesome o- observation. I didn't catch yeah. that. I yeah. just felt like they were so prepared to live live through this. Uh, I don't know, but like, how can any? I, I would assume like only five percent of the Earth's population survived because who the hell could live like that? Yeah, well, it's who tough. Hell? Yeah, you you take a good fart or burp or cough too hard, you're dead. <laughs> See, I would have been like that old man when his wife was. Now I wouldn't have yelled when the kid was there. I would have waited till they left. Right. But you know, at some point, there's a there's a place to pack it in. There's a time and place to pack it in. It's not worth when living. you're looking living in a world like that, yeah. and you're standing over your dead wife's body. Yeah. That is the time to pack it in. You know, <laughs> and I totally got the old man, except for the fact that he did it while the kid was there. Let them go. You don't have to bring them out while they're there. You know, wait. What another minute and they'd be gone? I right? mean, that was I, a bit of a jerkish thing. Isn't it? I understand what you're saying, John, but I would think if I was in that old man's shoes, I would at least try and kill the creature. I mean, maybe I would. Well, f- with what? Well, yeah, I don't I mean, know. It's get... a pointy stick, whatever, just something. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're doing the Monty Python uh, uh, references here a lot. The pointy yeah. stick. Right? Here's the thing: <laughs> nothing the human race could throw at these things was getting the job done, and no. they didn't. One of the biggest knocks against this movie: is, wouldn't they have tried everything? Like bullets? Yeah, didn't work. Oh, okay, uh, let's try heat. Let's try cold. Let's try. All the different things. Sound? Anyone? We knew that they picked up on sound. How about and this? You would have thought my biggest he... critique about the movie is that yeah. they should have had that figured out earlier. Scientists, someone should have said, "Okay, you're right." Extreme volume, extreme volume, everybody. Yeah. Let's do it. Anyways, that was my biggest gripe. But I don't know. I mean, the main character in the the, the movie, he, he can figure out how to make a cochlear implant. But he uh, he can't figure out how to use birth control, so I don't know. Oh yeah, you still hung up on that, aren't you? <laughs> okay. I I like. I'll let it go. He was religious, right? He I was, like uh, to think right. they're trying. There's to other control. ways to enjoy yourself. <laughs> but, That's right, John. John, come on. Point, yeah. To your point, John, they didn't 
give us any backstory. They just threw us no. into this world and we just go. You just it's go, true. man. Yeah. No, yeah, nothing. True. I had to freeze frame the movie to pick up pieces of anything to get a hint at the backstory. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like, and you don't do that because it flashes by so fast. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't want to criticize this movie. I was entertained. I was small I was, details. It, it grabbed me, yeah. right? Yeah. I, you're right. Small details and stuff. But yeah, I, you know, it, there's some things. But, uh, yeah. Um, but the but but the acting was insanely good. I thought it was. Uh, it was and, very and good. Yeah. I was so impressed by the kids in that movie. Um, yeah, starting with the youngest one, the one that gets killed right away. Yeah, it looks so yeah. so innocent and like exactly like I just want to play with this toy. Killed, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the next, the well, you know, he he grabbed the batteries. <laughs> he grabbed, the, that. Was like, he grabbed the batteries. And you're like, oh my god. Yes, but, you, you, but you think that'll you think that'll factor in way later in the movie, but it doesn't not happen right away. Later, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. it was yeah. it, it set the tone. It was like contagion, right? The movies yeah. like that kill off people right off the hop. It's real, man. It's on. But then the, the the older brother, his whole character through the whole movie was just in total fear. Fear. His face was always in pain. Like I'm scared, Dad. And like they push him through it and. He becomes a yeah. hero at the end, but man, what acting! What like kid? Okay, oh. so so um, the movie picks up eighty nine days after the event. The boy dies, and uh, and then and then the movie pops forward four hundred uh, something four hundred and seventy two days after the event, right. which is yep. a little over a year after this yeah. kid buys the farm. All right, so um, I don't know. I it I was. Wow, it just—it seems like you don't, you don't think that was enough time for this to happen, or what? what? Well, the the family still seems to be working through some pretty uh, fundamental uh, baggage. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, there's a lot of guilt. Well, Everybody in the family felt guilty about the son. Dying. It's almost like they they've never discussed it, but maybe yeah. they haven't. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. But you know what? Well, it's true. I mean, I I think maybe maybe this is what you're saying. I don't know, Steve. But he, you get a, a big emotional event happen to this family. Yeah. And rather than making that a, a part of the movie, they fast forward it and skip all that and, yeah. and go to you know. And it's kind of yeah. like this is you know as far as character development, um, and 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 getting to know your character. That was an opportunity. To see how people deal, you got a major stress stressor thrown at the family, and you, that was an opportunity to make character development. What are they made of? How do they deal with that? You know, right. but instead they kind of just boom go past it, which maybe was a lost opportunity there. I don't know. I mean, once, once again, again they, like they, the movie, I'm not gonna you know. They just chose not to fill in the backstory. But what we learn, yeah. I think, from that event is that they really buckle down and be super quiet. Super, super quiet. They have sand on paths that they've made to make sure that they don't stray off the path. They have all these plans in place. Like, you meet here, we'll do this. Uh, yeah. I mean, they tried their best to be prepared, but those those aliens were lethal. They cut through walls. They, like, Oh, crazy. they got that granary, and that's, like, that's thick friggin' steel. Yeah. So, yeah. so my point, my point is like the fact that just one of their kids died, one after all that, as a family's trying to survive, you gotta say, guys, we, you know, they, there's gonna be losses because they they're lucky they lived that long. It's ridiculous how crazy that is. Like, if they didn't, if the human race didn't try to nuke them and whatever, like they couldn't figure it out. Like they're lethal. It's like nobody's surviving. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Um, this. <laughs> Did you guys know that there's a sequel? Yes, I'm anticipating mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All right. Okay. It was the release was pushed back way back. It, it's supposed to be released in September. Now they're hoping theaters will be open at that time. Yeah. Um, it was literally, I think, was supposed to be released before all the COVID stuff happened. Yeah. It was going to be like the next weekend or something. So yeah. We, we could have had the sequel, like, but of course, here we are. 
here we are. Here we are at our homes recording. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to it. I don't know about you guys. Did are you into? Uh, did you like this movie? Or do you want to see the sequel? I liked it. I want to see. I, the I liked it. I'd, I'd want to see the sequel for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm in. Now, um, the in in the trailer for the sequel, um, it, it almost it almost feels like a prequel. Like this is what happened before. Oh, it's good. Um, but but from what I've read, most of the movie takes place after. So. Oh, so yeah. they, they do, but they do fill in the backstory in the in the sequel. Oh, of yeah. course, that's what sequels yeah. try to do, right? Le- have so many questions, right? I, all of us do, and that's what makes a good sequel, I think. Right? They got to come up with a story that's going to satisfy why oh, what happened. And I well, I saw in the tra- trailers they interact with more humans, and and versus this other movie, the first movie, they really only interacted with two humans. One was dead, and one was alive. The whole movie, right? Yeah, well, wasn't he um, doing a walkie-talkie thing where he was like... He tried. <laughs> he tried a Morse code uh, SOS to somebody, but I guess nothing was working. That was working, yeah. So, yeah You're all sequel, dead. You're all dead. Uh, yeah. The sequel opens it up to be like, what happened? And there's more people out there. So... Did you guys... Uh, did you guys anticipate the dad dying or anyone dying in that family? Or did you... Did the, Dad's death catch you off guard. No, I, I think it was foreshadowed by the wife saying, you'll do anything to survive or save the uh, kids. Okay. That she was, was the... the, you know, she was like, just gave birth and oh. and he's like, and yeah, he sacrificed himself. And he throughout the movie, he kept saying, make a bigger noise and you'll distract them. And he knew that's what it would take. And the, the yeah. kids knew that. Well, that was your sign to get, you know, dad's going to die for you. Take off in that truck, right? I was totally shocked. Yeah, I was totally shocked. I did not expect it. I thought the, I thought the movie might actually take a bad turn. He uh, when he picks up that axe. Yeah, I oh. thought okay, this is where the movie gets unrealistic, you know. But yeah. uh, but it's yeah. not what happened, <laughs> you know. I thought no, he I th- killed the bad guy. I think that was his in plan. He said, "Okay, I'll, I'll take a weapon," but after he got swiped and like you thought he was dead. He knew he couldn't beat this monster or this alien. The best he could do was get his kids safe to safety and sacrifice yeah. himself. Yeah. It was such a touching moment because the wife is watching him on camera and he, he sign, sign language throughout the movie was what they did to talk to each other. Yeah. And he's like, I love you. Always loved you. Oh, great moment. It yeah. Awesome. It's, it's a good moment. It's a good moment. Now, I mean, I, maybe, maybe this is sexist or maybe this is because i'm the guy in my house that always deals with the audio equipment and video equipment stuff but i my worry here in in the as the movie ends is that okay they figured out their weakness but i feel like they're they they're depending on the stuff dad has set up and how long is that stuff going to keep working? And if it breaks or whatever, dad can't fix it anymore. Oh, you know well, what I mean? He, he, yeah, it's a good point. There's a lot of those things I think of too. I had a few notes I could get into quickly, but like you need battery power, you need speakers, you need amplification, yeah. you need like, you know, more than they probably have. So that's a good question going forward because they know the weakness. They just got to get it in the right hands where yeah. they need a bigger system. And maybe they can mount a, a defense or a, a comeback or a counterattack. I, I believe no- it. I believe in World War II, the Germans uh, actually were working on technology. Now I don't think they actually used this, but um, there's a theory that if, if the right sound vibration yeah. could actually make humans fall apart. That's right? what they're do- t- talking about in this movie, right? Right, but th- for humans too, right? There was there was a big. It was like a. It looked like a, a nuclear silo kind of thing that right. they hold the field and make such a resin like that it, it, people literally fall apart from the the, the vibration yeah. that that produced. Right, it would take so, massive amount of energy to do it. Right. Yeah. Well, they, no, they they've they've made movies and songs about this. Oh, they have. <laughs> See, it's, yeah, it's, and, and, and but but it's it was a it's all a big comedy now. Okay. Have you heard about the brown note? I have I've not. No. Yeah, it's it's supposed to, you, you put this note 
out and oh, whoever okay. hears whoever hears it poops their pants <laughs> okay right well, uh, okay. hey we've, okay. we've all we've all heard about the the singer the uh person can hit the right note to break glass it's true yeah. it's a frequency you got it like yeah humans humans hearing spectrum is only so there's it's a, a certain range. range yeah but yeah. there's animals and aliens that or we don't know their technologies and their capabilities but humans can only hear within a range and then there's others that can hear beyond it so anything's possible Anything's possible. Anything's so possible. we'll kill the aliens and we'll all shit ourselves at the same time. Exactly. Well, like, exactly. The, the, the daughter was like exactly. going through hell. Her head, <laughs> head was about to explode trying to contain that noise for her, right? Yeah. So, and then she figured out, oh, I'll take this damn thing off and stick it on a microphone and create yeah. a. Yeah. I know. That was painful to watch, right? Because we all, as a viewer, we all knew this. Mm-hmm. But we're waiting for her to put two and to two figure, together to figure right? it out, and right? we had to watch some painful moments where she didn't connect those dots, yeah. and, right? And, and, and that was very frustrating as a viewer. You're like, "Come on, man! You know, you yeah. know the things around because the noise is in your ear, but she doesn't know the things around because the noise is in her ear. She hadn't put those, <laughs> you know." And as, and as soon as they figure it out, they see a bunch of them, like three more of them coming yeah. at them, and then the mo- the mother goes and looks at the the daughter. It's on. And it went kind of like Terminator or something at that yeah. point. Like, let's go. And, like, that's how it ends, right? Yeah. So they obviously make it. There's a sequel. So <laughs> so the the, the wife, um, the well, I can't remember her name, whatever her name is. Um, uh, Blunt's character. Emily Blunt. Um, Evelyn. Uh, yeah. So Evelyn, Evelyn. Steps, Evelyn steps on this nail. Oh, on, the on, the, on the stairs of her we got, basement. We gotta talk about that. Now she steps on this nail as her contractions start, and it, it's yeah. like a, a terrible moment. But from that point on, I kept expecting somebody else to step on the nail because everyone's running yes. up and down the stairs. I know, <laughs> and they show the kids coming down. You're like, yeah, oh my yeah. god, the nail, the dad, the and oh, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, no. Okay, okay, guys. <laughs> Here's the question. Fix the I, nail, I, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> how the hell is there a nail that way? How how did the carpenter that put that staircase well, together? Got, something got caught. What? The but potato it, sack. The potato sack. Yeah. The potato sack but, got caught and apparently pulled this thing up. But you're right. What? There's no you stair construction I know of that a potato you, sack could get caught on and somehow get a nail coming up in the middle of the stairs. That's just, to me, that's a magic you, trick. You, then, you drill or hammer down. You don't. Yeah. You know, come up you know. especially on a staircase that is another sour point of the movie which is go. like but it was effective. wildly unrealistic wildly unrealistic hey, see we will find how, a way to ruin every movie, every you know, movie. Yeah, you, yeah. You just, how about instead of that you put like a, a toy on the staircase where she slips and falls or something that was a kind of ridiculous thing because oh i liked the nail i, I liked it for the well, scene yeah. that it happened i mean okay it Put the side the, the unrealistic part. I loved watching that scene where, like uh, Steve was saying, she's having contractions and she's got a nail in her foot and she still manages to... Yeah, and she's supposed to stay... You know, yeah. yeah. Unreal. No, it, it, I, com- I, it compounds uh, tenseness and, and anxiety on top of yes. anxiety and it just makes for a great moment. It made it for a great moment. But it's yes. kind of ridiculous because that was... Yeah, that nail shouldn't have been there. You're right. That shouldn't doesn't be. make sense. Yeah. I don't know what else to say about that, but <laughs> I mean, they shouldn't have got pregnant either. But you know, we've moved past that now. <laughs> oh yeah, you're still on that one. <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh man. Okay. They should they should have used the devil's loophole. Yeah, and really, okay, <laughs> if we're gonna go just back to that point, if you're gonna use religion. Aren't you at some point when the world's that no fucked up, you're gonna abandon the religion? Conception. Like, is is every sperm still sacred when there's these creatures that snatch your children up? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think your beliefs might change a little. Oh, you know? we're just gonna get into trouble here. Don't, just don't think there. about it. Just don't think about it. Okay. So, <laughs> we don't need to go there. All right. I think. All we know- I think, John, you might be showing your uh, um, so a light switch. A light fixture in your in your video. Oh, you're t- oh. oh, 
Oh, oh, oh heavens! I the camera. Bid. My God! There. How dare you show uh -oh, off a light bulb? Poor Steve's gonna have to figure out how to work that one in. I don't know. I uh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, man, should we get into this trivia? We probably sure. should. I could talk right. about this movie for a while, but yeah, let's get on with it. The film's director and male lead John Krasinski uh, played the creature in a motion capture suit for a few scenes. Cool. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, he's director. He can do what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. He, sure. He did a great job. And it, it it's his wife, as you know, like, it must have been tough. He's directing. He's directing his wife. He's acting in it. Oh, Emily Blunt is married to him? Yeah. So oh what a God. great job. Yeah, what, a, what a team player. He just do whatever it takes to make a great movie. I love it. Yeah. Well, that means that they were playing married people. Yeah, that means their acting could suck. <laughs> That's right. Oh, <laughs> it's so simple. Oh, my God. We're, don't tell me the kids were their kids. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, they put a lot on the line, right? It just like uh, that yeah. could have been a divorce movie. They could ah, I'm divorcing you. They could. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay. Should I take the next one? Yeah. Um, actress. Melissant Simons, who played uh, Reagan Abbott. Uh, who's she? Uh, she was the deaf. Um, she oh, has been deaf, deaf since infancy due to medication overdose. This was the second film she started, with Wonderstruck 2017 being her first. So, I wonder if she's any related, any relation to J.K. Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I, uh, I could. Do, I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, There's a D in her name. I don't think his had. A, oh a, yeah, no D. Yeah, Never mind. Yeah, yeah, My bad. Yeah, Sorry. That, that's a stretch, Steve. But uh, yeah. you know, I loved her character and that fact that she's deaf. And then in the end, she is like the hero. She figures it out, and her, her yeah. deafness her, her works out to be the the weapon. And uh, great. I mean, it's good. She did a great job. She well, does, and, and you feel you really your heart goes out to this girl in the movie because All you really them, yeah. feel you, you like because she, she's the oldest and she should really be the one that's learning the things. The dad's taking out the the younger boy on his excursions and stuff, but you realize that it's a liability um, to to be deaf because if if a noise is going on, she's not aware of it, and You're noise not gonna is know. deadly, right? And so you really feel bad for her, you know, and. And she felt uh, internalized this, obviously, and felt like uh, dad doesn't even love me because, you know, uh, well, I, I mean, I think there's probably a lot of history that went on there between the two of them. But I, obviously, it's like, uh, you know, that's 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 that hurt her. The fact that she had that oh, but disability when it's so important in that world. Yeah, but by the end of the movie, she realizes dad was really, really loved her, trying to make yes. those ear implant to work and it you know time yeah, yeah. i mean it all worked out in the end i'll take the it's next it. trivia yeah go for it uh brian woods and scott beck's original screenplay contained only one line of voiced dialogue wow whoa because there's hardly any dialogue to begin with yeah, yeah. I I mean, so. we got the waterfall scenes we got some uh quiet talking in the when they pull the mattress over that, yeah, uh, you, know, some, but, you know, what, what threshold threshold was enough sound to trigger those aliens. That was the, the thing for me. I think they did an awesome job with the uh, sound editing and making us believe, but I mean, like anything, like you, you could, yeah. like I said before, you could fart or cough or something could trigger it. How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a scene in the uh, in the shopping mall or the grocery store right at the beginning when um uh who does Millicent play Regan Reagan Reagan the the deaf girl yeah uh, rushes out and catches the uh the the, toy. the, the toy spaceship yes before it hits the ground yes and uh, it's just um I guess she's um. She's always watching for noises, but how would she know how important that was? That I, I don't know. Well, that was eighty-nine days in, right? Yeah. So she yeah. would have already learned at that point that yeah. noise is super bad. 
Noise is super bad. Well, uh, oh. I was just going to make a quick point. Like, um, so, like, anything that makes noise in that environment, in the world, all the animals are getting killed, like, slaughtered, because they don't know better. Humans know better to shut up. This is the only thing we can do to, to survive. The rest of anything in nature would be just get killed constantly. So, most, eventually, most, there wouldn't be food left. Prey animals don't make noise uh, in general. I mean, you take a or rabbit, maybe, you know, yes. all, they're always trying to be quiet. Yeah. Uh, because they don't want to attract predators, right? Sure. Predators don't make a lot of noise because they're trying to sneak up on uh, the prey animals. Animals uh, are generally very quiet creatures for those for that even, those two reasons. Even the birds, they can just fly away. Well, yeah. they have advantage, but but mating season. Uh, yes, mating season there'll be things. a lot of deaths. Yes. So. I had some questions, but anyways, we'll stop there with that. We'll it would have to, you know, <laughs> it would mean at the end of all of this, we would have a, a race of super raccoons. <laughs> <laughs> or super snails. No, no humans, just super raccoons. Like worms would rule the earth. <laughs> um, actor, director, John uh, Krasinski has said that the single greatest compliment he received uh, regarding the film was in a tweet from the master of horror story himself, Stephen King. Um, Stephen King tweeted, um, a, a Quiet Place is a, an extraordinary piece of work. Uh, terrific acting, but the main thing is the silence and how it makes the camera's eye open wide in a way few movies manage. Um, yeah. he, he, did, he tweeted that out on April 6th, 2018. I like to follow Stephen King on Twitter. Not not always, you know. Sometimes he tweets too much, but uh, but he's he's an interesting guy. Yeah, he's got a lot of opinions. That is probably like the the best compliment you can get for a guy that's trying to get into the directing. Hell, I, that's yeah, awesome. I th I think if you even get a you know uh, a criticism from Stephen King here, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's even good. if he takes the time to shit yeah, talk you. Yeah. yeah. Good exactly. point. No, that that's awesome. That's I, I I totally agree with that uh, review, right? Yeah, I think that's his first movie, and and I mean he he knocked it right out of the park. Oh, I can't wait to see what he does next. Yeah. Oh, of course, quite now. Quiet, quiet Place, Place Two. Two. <laughs> quiet Place Two is not actually released yet, though, right? No, no, that just got it's, shut down yeah. just as this shit started it's hitting the fan. COVID, COVID. Uh, put it on a high delayed. Ice. COVID delayed. Uh, it but it, it is done though. It's oh, done. It was, okay. yeah. It's probably waiting just for whatever yeah. wait, you know, whenever it's safe to do it, it'll get released. But I can't wait. It's gonna be great. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, yep, yep. Um is that a quiet place, gentlemen? I think so. All right. Yeah, sure. Um next week, Monday at noon. I don't have a pick yet. Um uh, we're still we're still struggling to get together with Christian and Greg. Um they keep going on vacation and whatever else. Uh, and and how dare they? How dare they, really? Shame, shame. 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 For shame. Um, <laughs> um, I, uh, so I, I will have, a, we'll have another episode for you when, whenever we can get around to it, whenever we can manage it. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Primarily critical. Be, be kind to one another. Be good. Be um, safe. Be safe. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.